How's it going everybody? In this episode I'm going to go over common materials that you can use to tie jigs. This is video number two in the Jig Tying Basics video series, so if you missed the first episode that I go over tools, go back and check that out. I will post a link to the playlist in the description. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the most important material, which is thread. Thread comes in virtually any color. There's a few different types. My favorite is UTC Ultra Thread. It's super strong and has a glossy finish, which I love. It just gives the jig a really nice sleek look. This is a 70 denier, and that just refers to the size. 70 is the smaller one it comes in. Uh, it's not quite as strong, but it's not as bulky. If you're newer, I would recommend getting 140 denier. It's twice as thick, so it'll be a lot stronger, and in the earlier days you tend to break thread quite a bit more. The other thread I like to use is a little bit cheaper. It's uni thread. But if you can, I would definitely recommend getting UTC Ultra Thread. Alright, next we're going to go over jigs. So jigs come in all types of sizes and shapes. I just use round jig heads usually, and I paint them myself, which I'll be going over how to paint them in a future video. I mainly use 1 16th ounce or 1 32nd ounce, but you can get 1 64th ounce, uh, 1 8th if you're looking for bigger jigs. And then there's different types of hooks. There's regular hooks and there's sickle hooks. Sickle hooks I usually use for crappie, and then I use the regular hooks for any other fish. Alright, and we'll go over some body materials. I'm going to start with chenille. This is the most common body material for jigs. This is rayon chenille. It's fluffier, and it's pretty thick. It just creates a nice soft body for jigs. This is tinsel chenille. Um, it has some holographic fibers. This is a bit more coarse and it adds a really cool effect when it interacts with water. It traps the water and it makes the ends kind of disappear which gives it a really cool bait fish look. Now we'll go over dubbing. Uh, not everybody uses dubbing. I think it's an amazing material that's definitely underutilized. You use this instead of chenille or over chenille. It can add another dimension to jigs that looks amazing. If you've seen my UV ice minnow video, I make it almost completely out of ice dub, which is my favorite dubbing for jigs. Uh, there's also different types of dubbing. You can get natural fibers, synthetic fibers. So if you're serious about getting into jig tying, I would definitely recommend working with dubbing. Okay, this is schloppen. I mainly use it for uh, bass jigs and trout jigs. Uh, this is what they use in woolly buggers. It creates a nice buggy body when you use it as hackle like this. If you're just going to be tying crappie or panfish jigs, you don't really need this, but it's really helpful if you're looking to tie something that bass and trout aren't used to seeing. Now we'll go over some of the tail materials. So my favorite is marabou. I just use strung marabou. Uh, they just take a bunch of those feathers and string them up for you so they're nice and lined up. You can just take it off the string and it's ready to go. Marabou is really fluffy and when it gets wet, it gets pointy to mimic a bait fish and it has really nice action. That's a must have material in my opinion. Next we have bucktail. Bucktail is probably the most popular jig tail material. Uh, it's been used for years because it works so well and it looks very realistic when it gets wet. And this is a rabbit strip or rabbit zonker. It's just a cut of rabbit fur. It kind of has the same properties as marabou, but this will last a lot longer because it has hide attached so the fish can't destroy it as easily. And it comes in multiple colors like this fire tiger. Looks awesome and works great. This is a rooster saddle hackle feather. These, as you can see, have a really nice bait fish profile. So if you just tie it in as a tail, you can tie in a couple and it will give you a nice little bait fish shape. They are a bit flimsier so they don't last quite as long as the other materials. These are just round rubber legs that are mainly used for fly tying, grasshoppers and things, but they make a really nice tail material as well. They have a super nice action in the water and fish can bite them all day and they should stay intact. It just gives fish something they're not used to seeing as well. Up next we have craft feathers. I just purchased these from a craft store. They just come in a bag, all different types of colors. They have nice coarse fibers that make really good tails. It's a super cheap material, so if you're looking to tie a bunch of jigs for a really cheap price, I would definitely pick up a bunch of these. You can mix and match the colors, and there's basically endless possibilities with those. Alright, these are more of an accent. So these are crystal flash. You tie them in with a tail. Whatever material you use, you can tie in a few of these with it, and it gives it a really nice reflective look. 
Crystal Flash is pretty stiff, so it doesn't have much action. It just creates a nice straight line of flash. This is Flashaboo. Flashaboo is flimsier, uh, it's more holographic, and it can be used with Marabou, and it will keep the action of the Marabou, or whatever other materials you use with it. And then this is Flash Tinsel. This is basically Flashaboo fibers, just a super reflective holographic look. I like to add these in a lot of my jigs. So those are all the basic materials. If you're looking for must-haves, I would definitely get Marabou, Craft Feathers, Chenille, and Bucktail. The rest I usually use to just mix it up, but those ones are must-haves. As for where to get materials, I get most of my materials from flyfishfood.com. This is my local fly shop. Any fly shop has a really good selection, so you can go to any fly shop. This website makes everything really easy to find. If you just go up here, you can see the fly tying supplies, and they're nice and organized for you. You can get your thread, pick out your colors, and then you can go through any of the other materials as far as marabou, chenille, dubbing, anything you need, they have it here. Most materials are pretty cheap, so you can get a bag of craft feathers for less than $5. That'll be able to tie dozens of jigs. Chenille can be pretty cheap as well. Usually the chenille I buy is about $3 for 10 yards or so. I also found an incredible deal from a seller on eBay. I'm going to add a link to their shop in the description. You can get a pack of 12 different colors of chenille for like 7 bucks. It's something crazy like that. So it'll just give you a lot of options for colors as you're starting out jig tying. So those are all the basic materials. I hope that was helpful. If you do have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment and I will respond to that as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing.